close to the edge. Ah. Hey there hikers, Adam Hoy here. Welcome back to the channel and another hiking video. On today's hike, we'll be exploring Purgatory Chasm. Let's take a look. All right, so the plan for the hike today is we're first gonna hike through Purgatory Chasm by following the Chasm Loop Trail. Once we make it to the end of the chasm, we are going to go on to the Little Purgatory Trail and then loop back the way we came. When we reach the fork in the trail, we will pick the Chasm Loop Trail back up onto the chasm walls and hike along the cliff until we make our way back to the parking lot. This whole loop will be just around two miles from start to finish, but enough explaining. Come on, let's get to hiking.
And that there's Purgatory Chasm. You saw we did the three trails, the Chasm Trail, Little Purgatory, and then uh, Charlie's Loop up top. Purgatory Chasm is located in Sutton, Massachusetts, just below Worcester, around 45 minutes outside of Boston, give or, give or take. It's in a very easy to access location. Hiking through the chasm itself, it was extremely fun. Uh, there's a lots of rock scrambling, and that is the main draw of coming to the chasm is scrambling up the rocks, doing a little bit of rock climbing. You really can't imagine that something like this exists in the middle of Massachusetts. It's so unlike the rest of the scenery we see around here down in the gorge. The rocks themselves, they might not look so big from some of my hiking footage, but they really are extremely large. I'm almost six foot tall and they're much larger than me. So it really is awe inspiring, especially if you bring kids. So this trail is very fun and the scrambling is great, but the one precaution I really have for people attempting this trail the rocks can become rather slippery and as I was making this video I almost slipped more than once but and definitely caught myself slipping. There were several points of interest on the trail along the way. There's around five main named points of interest plus two bonus ones that I like to throw in. You had the Lover's Leap, the Devil's Pulpit, the Devil's Coffin, Little Purgatory, then there was the Fat Man's Misery, and the Devil's Corn Crib. There's also a slide rock outside near the parking lot for good measure, which doesn't really have a name. So the Lover's Leap is this ledge that you can easily climb up on. There's a sign that points out exactly where this part is. The ledge is long enough and wide enough that more than one person can scramble on up there. And as you walk along the ledge, it actually gets a little bit higher and it does get two to three feet off the ground. So it is fun to climb up there and then jump off, I guess. The name itself suggests that it is big enough for you and your significant other to commit suicide on, which which I guess for the one landmark not named after the devil uh, is very in with the theme of all the rest of the naming of this part, which is funny to me because I, I didn't really think purgatory was part of hell and that the devil didn't have any power there, but what do I know? I guess maybe purgatory is one of the layers of hell based on how much uh, devil nomenclature there is being thrown around at these different landmarks. So the devil's pulpit comes just after the lover's leap and this one is much easier to miss. There is not a sign there right now. It, there used to be a sign, but you can clearly see where the sign holes used to be. There's a little alcove where there's some rocks sticking up out of the the flat ground right next to the edge of the cliff and there's kind of like an overhang above you that juts out a little bit to give you kind of like a little alcove or, or I guess I guess what they would call it. Then though the stone on the ground would be the pulpit so you're able to stand on it and there's like the staging around behind you and you can preach to your uh, demons or whoever the devil would be uh, preaching to from his pulpit but it's a fun little spot. One of the more death-defying landmarks would be the Devil's Coffin, which comes right near the wooden walkway. This cave, it's very small. You just go in the one entrance, you can stand up inside and then pop out. Fun to scramble in. Oh, you gotta watch your head. It's a little bit um, low in there, but it is fun to scramble inside and then come out the other side and it really does give you that little sense of claustrophobia. So Little Purgatory is kind of mentioned on the map, but not really called out Little Purgatory is the whole name of the extra trail. So the whole, the main chasm is called Purgatory Chasm. And as you saw, it's very large. It has the huge rock. And Little Purgatory is just kind of, you hike through the woods and you find another little area of rocks that's a little bit smaller. Uh, there is active water running through it. So it's more like a stream. If Fat Man's Misery is one of my favorite landmarks. This is that large, you could call it a slot. It's just, just the, the huge crack in the rock, the big squeeze there. I had trouble squeaking through, you know, it is doable. The entrance to it is that what you saw at the beginning of the video, it be sure to definitely start at the end and sh try and shimmy your way through it. It can get a little claustrophobic. It is 10 to 15 feet from the bottom to the top and it's fun. You're able to easily climb up on top of the rock to look into the ledge as well, not only shimmy through it like I did. So Devil's Corn Crib is right next to the fat man's misery. It, it's hard to even see it. It's not well marked. And I don't necessarily even know what a corn crib is or if it necessarily looks like what the layer of rocks look like. It's kind of just a few more rocks along the ground and then it has a smaller slot through it that goes maybe waist high if you're lucky. And so if, I guess this is an instance where if you are too scared or or don't want to fully go through the fat man's misery, the devil's corn crib is another good option for you. Uh, there also is large slide rock near the parking lot at the beginning of the chasm. Be sure to check that out. That is uh, a fun little uh, adventure in itself once you've 
done all of your hiking. The trail, when I did it, I went early in the morning. It wasn't too busy, but definitely as the day picks up, it can get rather busy. I went on a Friday, so it was less busy than it would be on a weekend. So if you want to avoid some of the crowds, you should come early, but that should no way deter you from coming to check it out. The trail itself was very well marked for the chasm. They have blue blazes painted on several of the different rocks, so you easily see them as you're hiking through. Granted, it's not so easy to get lost in the chasm. There's only one way in, one way out. When you get onto the Little Purgatory Trail, it switches over to green blazes. When it comes to being on the chasm walls, on the rest of the Chasm Loop Trail, the blazes are on the rocks and on the trees, so it should be very easily to follow along and, and not get lost. The parking situation is very accessible at the Chasm. They have two main parking lots. There's one along the road right near the entrance of the Chasm and a larger parking lot near the entrance center. They can fill up quickly on busy days. When it comes to parking there, you do have to pay a ticket, so make sure you pay and put it on your car before you begin your hike for the day. A lot of the park's facilities are operating at a reduced amount. The information center is closed to visitors. They used to have a bathroom in there that you could check out, but that is not available in this time. When it comes to the main chasm itself, there is a lot of signage indicating that it is one way only. This is because of its narrow nature and trying to maintain the social distance guidelines. So the park has lots of different things for you to check out just besides the main chasm. Even in the main area near the visitor center, they have several picnic fields to explore. Um, because the, the park was developed in like the early 1900s, there's a lot of strange houses or buildings made out of rocks that were all left over from that time back in the day. I wouldn't say the hike was too overly difficult, that it is only a quarter mile long and there isn't a lot of elevation gain. So the majority of the difficulty of this hike comes through in the technical nature of the rock scrambling in the main chasm. So when it comes to my overall uh, difficulty score, uh, the steepness, not really a factor. The technical element is a large part of the factor. Uh, the length is not really a factor at all. You can make it as long or as short as you want, how many times you want to hike through, if you want to add a little purgatory onto it, or if you don't. So when it comes down to my thing, I would be tempted to rate this as my lowest difficulty rating, which would be a walk in the woods. But due to that technical nature and the propensity for slippage, or I would definitely bump this up to my second category, which would be off the beaten path. Yes, I would highly recommend this trail. Um, it's one of my favorite ones uh, just outside of Austin. So is this a trail you'd want to explore? Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Also, if you have ideas for different places that I should be exploring next, if you're at all inspired by the hike I did today, I've included links to a custom all trails map that I made with notes and pictures to the hike in the description down below as well as all the gear that I use to make this hike. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and feel free to subscribe to see more videos just like this one. Well, that's it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Freaking tripping over myself. <laughs> A little too slippery for my taste. And real tight squeeze. Uh.